Recording in progress. Okay. Okay. Start again? Okay. I'd like to call the Economic Development Commission's regular meeting to order. It is Thursday, June 17th, 2021, and it is 7.32, and roll call. Ted McLarisi. Jack Traver. <coughs> Stephen Miskey. Saige Antonetti. Robbie Piazzarelli. Katerina DeVito. And Joe McGrail. And Joe Seacrest, staff. Okay. okay. Uh, public participation? Really quick, sorry. Did you want us to wear the masks? No, no, because or everybody's just... been vaccinated. Okay. I think okay. we're good Thank right you. now. Yes. I just really don't know. Second one from the left. Second from the left. It's got the picture no, of the person different. speaking. It's a different, a different setup, I think. Thank you. Catherine, feel free to remove your mask if you like. Okay, all right, thank you. Catherine Camera, 31 Cottage Place in Oakville. Um, so I want to talk about the Sealy property, and I want to talk about what's going on with that, um, because I'm extremely disappointed. There's no doubt you know I'm the only person who basically comes to your meetings on a very regular basis, which has been years now. So I absolutely know the beginning of that study. And I absolutely know that there's no doubt if you go back and you look at the recordings or listen to the recordings, you're going to find that what you said was that you wanted to get a study for that property so that when somebody came to planning and zoning, there wouldn't be any question about what they'd be allowed to put on it. And it would all go very smoothly because the town would say, hey, listen, if you do this, you're in. Not a problem. Well, I've been to my third very long public hearing last night. Um, contested and it's been said by Mr. Seacrest that this application aligns with advanced CT. I find that to be impossible because if it aligned with advanced CT there wouldn't be this application. So it's not possible. And what really bothers me is that you wrote this letter about the height you've said nothing about drive-through and advanced CT definitely says restaurants, no drive-through. So I don't understand what went wrong here that you wanted the study. I, I was all for the study. We spent the money for the study. It came back with certain things. They're asking for things that are not in the study. The neighborhood is on fire about the drive-through. And, you know, I've sat here. I saw what happened when Grillo was going to go into a neighborhood of one of your members, and how hard you fought for that. Well, you know what? Your members aren't the only people in town. And I'm, I'm, I'm extremely disappointed, because I was so for this, and I thought this was going to be great. You're, they're going to come in, and, and this is what we want to see there. And there's been no fighting for the people about that drive-through. When it's not, it's definitely in advanced CT that it doesn't comply with advanced CT. And everybody in that neighborhood is fine with what the advanced CT came up with. Um, so, uh, you know, I don't know. I felt like there was a disconnect. Uh, th th maybe I missed something, because I, I thought all along that this was supposed to be in line with, with um, uh, planning and zoning, that they knew that you were looking into this and doing this so that it would flow with them. And then, and then when this whole thing started, it was like, they don't even mention that, that study. It, they, they don't even talk about it. The, the, the people are up there talking about it, and, and they're not even acknowledging that it exists. And, and tax dollars were spent for that. So, you know, as a person who goes to all, mostly all the meetings, I, I'm connecting the dots. And one, another thing that bothers me, and they're calling me a um, conspiracy theorist, okay? I know that Wendy's has been looking for a place in Watertown. Now I go to this, and, and these people are, are 
trying to cram down our throats, and they've, they've said they're not going to purchase that property unless they're allowed to have drive through So, you know, call me a conspiracy theorist, okay? But that's the way I see it. They're going to get this property, and they're going to go straight to Wendy's because we know Wendy's wanted to come into Watertown. I don't, I, it's two facts. Maybe, maybe, maybe they don't line up, but they are facts. It's been said here, and they're looking for drive through so, you know, forgive me for as someone who's concerned, as someone who's been, who comes to these things because I'm interested, because I want to see what works for the people in this town. And I've got a neighborhood who are ready to sue, and they will. And, and, and then that property's going to sit there. Everybody talks about this property has sat there for 30 years. It has not sat there vacant for 30 years. It was contaminated. No one was going to build anything there. So, you know, let's be real about how, how long it's been. Yeah, it, it hasn't had a business on it or anything, but it couldn't have. And then it opens up, and, 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 and as soon as it opens up, boy, these guys have come in, and they're... I, I have to tell you that if, you, if nobody was on that meeting last night, it was, it was quite interesting, the last 20 minutes of it, because... We're, I'm not even sure they might have actually, we're not even sure if um, by default they're, they're, they're granted because planning and zoning couldn't even answer the question about the uh, state's um, executive order if it's, still pen, if it's still active. And if it's not, then, then they just got their application in by, by um, a procedural error. A procedural error allows an appeal. So, you know, th th it's turning into a great mess, which, which brings me back to, wasn't that the whole point of advanced CT? And, and, it, and I'll tell you, it was Cirque to begin with. So, so you can't tell me I don't know the, the, the history. I remember Cirque. Then I went to advanced CT, and I was here before that, too. So, you know, it, it, it bothers me that, you know, there's plenty of people who poo-poo me, like, I don't know what I'm talking about. I do. I absolutely do. And I'm going to fight with those people. It's my neighborhood, too, OK? If you, if you ran a line from the property and went behind a house and came up my street, I think, I'm, I think I'm 450 feet from one of the corners of that property. It's my neighborhood. And I'm going to fight tooth and nail, not because I don't want to see something on that property, because we don't want drive through. And another thing, Mr. Uh, Lombard, who gave us Starbucks, OK, I fought Starbucks not because I didn't want a Starbucks here, because I didn't want a drive-through in that location. I was happy to have Starbucks either without the drive-through there or in another location with the drive-through. And if anybody can tell me that that's been working out fine, you know, I, I don't think you live in town because there's plenty of issues there. As a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you one thing. I started to do some per diem work for an attorney. She does personal injury, which isn't something I always do, but the first case that she needed a complaint on was Watertown, French Street, and Main Street. This is, this is a woman out in Plainville, or, yeah, Plainville, that, that has this case for Watertown. Okay, my, my, my first one to do for her is, is like right there. So, and, and one day I was out my, doing my protesting, and I get a call from a friend who says to me, um, are you okay? I said, yeah, why? Because five minutes after I walked through that intersection, there was an accident. So, Mr. Lombard said at the first public hearing, uh, when I went back and watched it again, I missed it live, he said, um, you know, Main Street and Watertown on the weekends, yeah, it's, re it's really backed up, but there's nothing you can do about it. Really? Really, there's nothing you can do about it? How about you don't let a drive-through in an area that can't handle it? And I'm going to tell you something, that area down there cannot handle it. And please look at your... Uh, advanced CT report that tells us 15,000 cars a day go between the light on Hillside and the light on Davis Street. Right there. And we're, and we're going to add a drive through And they think it's okay because the drive through is going to be interior. I'm not sure what that means. Do cars drive in and disappear? They never come out? I mean, what difference does it make if it's interior? You got cars going in and out for the fast food, for the drive through so, so these, these reasonings, are, are, they're just unbelievable to me. So I'm sorry to take all this time tonight, but as somebody who has sat through the history of this, 
and is now living through what I, I never imagined after we did that, that, that study. It, it just boggles my mind, and it's really, it's really upsetting to me. I didn't expect this. I really didn't. And, and now we don't even, I, I can't even tell you how that meeting ended, if it's, if it's over. If, if we're, we don't even know if we're having another public hearing. We don't even know if it's going to be live, which we've been asking for. I, nobody knows what's going on. My phone blew up when that thing ended last night. What's going on? Well, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, you know? So anyway, thank you. Thank you for your time. Turn this off. Thank you. Then you can... Everybody got the minutes, but okay. I have ex ex Everybody minutes. got the minutes? Okay. I just want to make sure. Okay. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes of the May 20th, 2021 meeting? I make a motion. Second. Okay. Motion is made and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Abstain. I wasn't here. Okay. I was sort of asleep. Who made the oh, yeah, motion? Uh, Teddy. Steve. Ted, Ted and Steve. Okay. No, I understand. Ted. Oh, okay. Who seconded? I did. Jack. 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 Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. So correspondence none. No. Okay. Your report, sir. I mailed it out to you, but if you, I have extra copies. If you need, need one. I'll take the one. Yeah. Okay. Would you like yes, I'll meet you halfway. Yeah. How's it going? Okay. Yeah. You need one, Yes, please. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Um, I mean, we'll look on with her. Okay. Next we can. Oh, yeah. Next school, we can. I was going to look on my phone, but. Because you emailed it to us. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We won't. Well, uh, earlier this last week, I guess it was, we hosted a uh, meeting with uh, Patrick McMahon. We are members of Connecticut Main Street, and we pay our dues every year. We don't really ask for much or do much from them. But uh, concerning the uh, old town hall, I thought, well, let's get Patrick up here, and he was nice enough on very short notice to come up and meet with us uh, and to talk about the renovation of the town hall. As I mentioned here in my report, he was so entranced, well, I shouldn't say entranced, he, he so liked Watertown that the next weekend he brought his daughter back and took pictures around the town of uh, historic buildings and historic areas and he sent me copies of them. There are 119 pictures that he sent me. So uh, I didn't expect that kind of response. He also, uh, and tying into number two there, one of the possible purchases of the town hall, and there are several. I don't, I don't know how many because I don't get involved in that, but I know there are several offers to buy the property. And the one person who reached out to me uh, was... Uh, a, a local person, he lives on North Street, so he, you know, he says he walks past the uh, town hall all the time, and entranced with it. Uh, he would like to buy the building, turn the, the basement, which used to be the jail cell, into an English pub, and build a patio out back, uh, which would be, you could sit and have drinks, and. and He's addressed the parking issue as well, that he, he's seeking, and I think he's received now an easement between, I still call it Peel Drug, the, the <laughs> building there, and between the town hall, that he could put an easement in there and put in, I think it's 17 parking spaces along there, and then at night he could use the, uh, the chiropractor's lot for dinner. He would only be open for, uh, for dinner, not for lunch. The second floor would be a boutique hotel. He's thinking about six to eight rooms in there. And then the very top floor, if you've ever been up there, and most, most people haven't because it's been condemned, uh, is a, uh, 
a wooden auditorium. It's a beautiful old auditorium with a stage. And, you know, the building's over 100 years old, so they used to have town dances there and basketball courts and everything on that, in that room. He wants to buy it, and he's, he, the number he throws around is in the millions that it would cost him to completely renovate the building. Uh, that got all of our interest because it, it is a historic building, and, and, and I think my personal feeling is it could be a destination for people from other towns if they wanted to come into Watertown for uh, a pub kind of food and have a drink. And uh, it, there's probably a market for the people from Taft for the boutique hotel and for other people in town. There are a lot of people up in the business park have visitors come in. So and Patrick McMahon set in on all those meetings. He also went with us on a tour of the building. He wanted to look at the building. And it's, it, it's really, I mean, if you've been in it, I, I had never been in the basement till then. I mean, it's really a mess. I mean, he's, uh, millions of dollars are probably the right number to get that back in shape. My understanding is uh, other bidders, nobody's gonna tear the building down, but other bidders might wanna buy the property and use just primarily the main floor as office space put in some window air conditioners instead of redoing the whole. If, if this guy bought it, he would redo everything, all HVAC, everything. He's very, he's, he is a, I call him a historian. He's a builder, but he's really up on, on the history of Watertown. And uh, he would uh, comply with all of the requirements for the historic district, which uh, controls the outside appearance of the building. And he thinks that uh, he, he intends to do whatever they need to make it look all right from the outside. So, and Joe, you said he's the same guy, the one, McMahon, as the, the number one and number two are the same. Same owner. Oh, okay. So no, it's the, no they're McMahon different. Is not, is not the person. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's what I was trying to say. No, he's the president of Connecticut Main Street. Got it. Okay, I didn't know if because right. you were saying he loved it so much. If he yeah. loved it that much, he fell in love with. No, but I, I, I think the important thing there is it, it goes back all talked about here yeah. is Which Watertown needs a destination. Oh, okay, sorry. We, you know, we need a destination point, and that was, certainly would be a destination point. Yeah, and probably, distant. Yeah, probably very helpful to, you know, tap school with, with, the, with the bed and breakfast there. Um, so it, it's, uh, and it preserves the building. It puts the building back in, in good, solid shape, and so I think it's, uh, it has a lot of potential. I hope that's the way it goes, but, you know, I wonder if we can connect them with whoever did the work in Litchfield. You know the marketplace that they put in. That's Dr. Yeah. Barlow, Bar Martins, the same I, people that did the uh, Kmart. So I wonder if we could connect them with them in some way because they did a similar thing where the basement is the was the uh, jail, mm -hmm. right? Right. And so it's like a multi-level thing underground, right. similar age. But just so you know that they, uh, this uh, the person interested in this has been in contact with several people okay. of, of historical, restoring okay. or historical buildings. Actually at the meeting was the chairman of Connecticut Preservation and uh, another, another government agency that does pre preservations. They also had the ability to put him in touch with a lot of uh, potential funders for, for grants. I mean, that's a big fight for somebody to take a couple million dollars. Just for clarification, mm -hmm. the millions of dollars that he, or whatever his budget is, that includes bringing the building up to usability and renovating it mm -hmm. for what he'd like it, right. not just Correct. for right. you. Okay, thank you. I think the only sticking point, if there's going to be one, is he, he might not be low bid, mm -hmm. because obviously the cost of the building plus renovations and, uh, and there are other people who, have, who I understand have bid full asking price, which is $125,000. Can I ask a question that might be weird? Because uh, <laughs> I don't know how the rules happen with all of this kind of stuff, but um, if it's already a town-owned property, so we're not collecting taxes on it, um, it's just been sitting there. It's just going to continue to sit there until someone does buy it, and then who knows how long it'll still... Right. sit there. Is there any way to, I mean, I know we don't want to just give anything away for free, but it would be something that would then go back onto the tax roll 
when it was completed. So is there some way to even sweeten the deal more for people? I know we had talked about it quickly last time. Um, it, it will be on the tax rolls. The taxes uh, are computed to be $5,000 a year. And I would suspect if he's the winning bidder, he will probably come to this commission for a break on property taxes. Which tax we, abatement. Which well, we I was saying, like, if he, if he was the guy, let's say, um, and we didn't just go with money since, again, it's our fault that this building's in this condition. If he got it for even less so that it was, he was able to do those historic, you know what I mean? If there was a contract written up that he was yep. able to do it exactly the way he wants to do it, historic preservation, the plans that he has going, we can help set him up with those people that do, you know, can get the grants for him, all that kind of stuff, do everything possible, because then that's going to be an awesome asset for the town mm -hmm. and will then be on our tax rolls after it's all completed. So it's like, I don't want to say, let's give it to him for free, oh, but yeah. essentially, is there a way to give it to him We've for We've had some something? preliminary discussions about paying a dollar, paying five dollars. Right. Uh, another option for him that we've considered is we maintain ownership of the building, say, for three years, charge him a very low lease rate, you know, 50 bucks a month or something, just to assure us that he's going to do what he says he's going to do. And that as he progresses along, and we're sure that he's going to renovate as he said he's going to do, then either give him the building or sell it to him. Or there, all those things could be considered, but, but right now it's, it's with the town council and they, they have to make a business decision. That's what scares me. <laughs> you no, know, they've got at least two other bidders who are willing to pay full price uh, so, and my understanding, I don't have any direct knowledge, but my understanding is the council loves this concept as much as we do. Uh, and the, the whole political issue would be having to explain why we sold a building to a low bidder. Mm -hmm. But that's, those, that's life in the big city. I, that's their problem. This particular bidder is someone who lives in town, understands the historic nature of mm -hmm. the building, and is looking to bring in more. He has, and he owns a construction company. Okay, so, so this is someone who would really yeah. understand what Watertown is about. Okay. Watertown, Oakville, really kind of keep with our ideas of and, and what just, we like. And just for clarity, so people yeah. don't get the wrong idea, the gentleman that is looking at the building has no ties to Watertown at all. He, he's not a local contractor. His business is in Wolcott. So it, he, and he has no... Well, he lives in town. He lives in town, but I'm saying, but the business itself, he's not, he's not a name that you would hear uh, on a regular basis. He's just somebody who's very interested it's, in the he, building. He's approaching this more the as a resident than as a businessman. Gotcha. So I just, just, nice. All right, thank you. That's what I'm looking for. And for both of them, he, he, he's fallen in love with the building. I mean, he very much wants, oh, wants nice. the building because he, he likes it historically. So. And I, I just see so many of those shows where they're like renovating these buildings in Detroit and stuff that are basically less than a shell of a building <laughs> and they bring it back to like this perfect mm -hmm. historic preservation so it's like if they could do it to these other buildings but, I mean it's costly know, but Connecticut Green Works and some others do 30 year loans at 2% interest and there's a, a, a I've, I've put him in touch with all these people and Patrick has followed up with all of these people and making sure they're meeting and the, 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 C, the C, pay, C pays program is it, it actually goes on the lien of the property. We have four or five businesses in town who already do it. And it, it goes on as a lien on the property over 30 years at 2% interest with no uh, prepayment penalty. So that's the kind of financing that he's, no bank can match that. Yeah. And, and he's talking actively with all these groups in, in preparation for a decision on the property. And I, and I do believe, I mean, you, you tell me if I'm wrong, but I think the town council, I think on all these bids, the town council can can make a decision um, and choose something other than the high bid uh, without explanation. I know there's some, kind, mm. I assume it's the same in this particular case, but I don't know that for sure. But there may be some latitude the town council has. Um, so. There's a term for it, I can't remember, but it's like, yeah. 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 The benefits outweigh in other ways or something. I think it's something that the, I'm sensing the commission could get behind. Yeah, yeah pretty absolutely. Easily. 
Is there a timetable that the council has for when they're actually going to take this up and actually discuss well, they, the various prospects? They've, they've deferred it twice. Yeah. And they, I think it's, they, defer, yeah, this, they just deferred it in the last meeting. Uh, because all this happened, a lot of this happened a couple of days before the town council meeting. So Mark went to them and said, listen, all this is brand new. Let's, you know, give me some time to sort through this. So don't make a decision tonight. Do you think he has a timetable that he's looking at? Or when he, I know, he's serious? I think the town council start? wants him to, on a tight timetable. But I think there's been, to Joe's point, there's been a lot of correspondence. I've been copied on a lot of these emails. So there's a lot of back and forth right. between all these people, parties. So I think the person that's looking at this has a lot of information at his disposal so he can make a far better decision than he could have made two or three weeks ago. So, and I think it, it would be, I think the town council has to wrestle with it because again, between the, between where all these people are, to be honest with you, I, statistic, you know, mathematically, it's not gonna change the town, the town's budget, it's not gonna change our right. reserve, it's not gonna, yeah. it's, not, it's not that significant. We're not talking millions of dollars, we're talking about tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. Even, but it's, even the cost of the building, it's like. But it's preserving an like asset. Just, right, yeah. exactly. A historical asset right. that should not be allowed right. to deteriorate right. anymore. Well, my point is, it, it, the difference right. between it's, it's the, the high bid and low mm. bid is ten, compute, okay. you know, maybe 20,000. I, I don't know what it is exactly, but it's not, it's not a lot of money. So maybe we could put some input in in terms of choosing the right person for the job who really is dedicated and understands and has the right program rather than going for the high? Yeah. Well, and then when all this came up some months ago, the, the town hall and the town hall annex were put up for sale. And the annex sold fast and is back on the tax rolls. So the, the concept then was let's get the town hall back on the tax rolls as soon as we can because the longer we don't sell it, the more we have to maintain it. And all the pipes have been drained and everything, so we could sustain it through a winter without any heating bills or anything. But I think they're feeling, uh, and I, I, I frankly don't know whether the proceeds of this sale is included in this year's budget or not. I just don't know. I'm pretty sure it was. Yes, yeah, was it? Both of them were included. Yeah. Pretty sure. And um, but just we did send that letter um, to the town council showing interest in this particular. No, there was no letter. I, I talked with Mark and Mark has talked with them, and they know about okay. it. I mean, the town he's had long conversations with them. Okay, they're aware of all of this. I think that's the reason they're putting off a decision is they would like to do this, and uh, in just my layman's opinion, I, I don't have any evidence of this. I think it's explaining to the public why you took a low bid on a piece of property. Right. I think this is an easy sell. It's, <laughs> it's not a. It's not a. It's not a very hard sell in my book. But and it's such a great location, yep. even historically, with two yeah, highways right. that have such a history yep. to them too, and yep. Taft. It's, it's it, right there. It's in the well, green, and it's perfect. There's a, a lot of history to tie in. It it's a really great place. I just think of the. He's a businessman, and he says, he and I talk about. Uh, what if he goes bust? What if he does all of this and then it, it does make money? I said, well, then you own a building that has been completely renovated and, you know, worst case scenario, you sell it to somebody. I'll do the pro bono PR work and get them in all of the historic preservation <laughs> magazines and everything. I well, will do whatever it takes. Yeah. It's on the Hi National Historic Register now. No, but I mean, when you see all these, like, you know, magazines now right. of the sort of preservation and stuff, we could be one of those examples, right. you know. Oh, well, it's something we're all excited about. So, so maybe we can address this again uh, under new business. We have the town hall sale, and maybe we can entertain a motion that we send a letter to the town council. So we can maybe just push that off until that part of the agenda. Okay. Okay. Uh, item number three on my report. Uh, uh, two companies ha have built new buildings in town in our business park. The Universal Welding building is, is they're finishing the inside, and that's a brand new building. And it's, I call it two stories. It's because the first floor has very high ceilings because they have cranes and all of that stuff. So it's a, it's a two-story high building. Uh, 
and then uh, Theraplant has got the steel work up for their 36,000 foot uh, addition to their building. So of the of the 30 manufacturers in the business park, this will make nine of them who have ex expanded their current facilities in the last 10 years. So uh, that's good news for the town because as you know as business people, when you run out of space you have two choices, move or, or build where you are. Mm -hmm. And the people who have considered it have all built in Watertown, so I like that. And it, it all helps the uh, grand list. Uh, Bork, number four, the Bercasey Construction uh, wants to build a, a gas station and they're calling it an upscale convenience store at the corner of uh, Buckingham and Echo Lake Road. It's across from where the Uncommon Grill is, that building across from there. Uh, they have not indicated who the tenant will be. Uh, but they're at Inland Wetlands now That's because they would have to do some, uh, some, some grading work that would, might, might affect the wetlands on the property. And they've asked for 56 uh, parking spaces, and it's an 8,100, 8,100-square-foot building. And it, it will be two stories. So. Do we know, is there, like a, is there a limit um, per acreage or whatever for gas stations and other, you know, other businesses that would have that kind of chemical on the property? Are there limits to it, or it's I just you could have 17 gas stations in a row? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Mm. I don't know that. I'd be interested to know if there's the, a... The building area in that lot, it's, it's a lot of wetlands. So there's a, a very small plot that they can put a building on. Which is kind of precarious already, right? Building a gas station in the middle of wetlands. Oh, yeah. But it sat there for years and years and years now. And yeah. Once upon a time, they were going to put a hotel there, but the but they just couldn't. The spot that they chose to build on wasn't big enough, and the wetlands was too vast, so they walked away. That's gone back probably 15 years ago, maybe. So it's been a long time since there's been any activity on that property. So. Uh, number five there. Uh, Ms. Camara addressed that today. It's a Sealy property that they extended the public hearing uh, one more time last night. Uh, and so they will hear, have one more public hearing, and I guess they're still deciding whether it's going to be all Zoom or whether it's going to be live. It's going to be all Zoom, I think. Oh, a mix? It wasn't discussed uh, last night. Live. Oh, live. Oh, good. Well, they talk about good. Well, I see good. <laughs> come in and say what they want to say. You know. uh, six there, I know one restaurant, and somebody today, I, I did a presentation, I, I do every month, to the Watertown uh, Chamber of Commerce. I'm on, I'm on their board, and I mentioned item six there, that Gail's Farm had received some of the restaurant revitalization uh, funds, and somebody in that meeting mentioned that another company that I didn't get. I think there were two. I don't, yeah. I'm not sure who the other were. Is I know Gail called me crying. Yeah. <laughs> it saved her business, basically. Yeah, it saved and, her and business. It's, it's really astonishing because, as, as Zyga certainly knows, it, the, about an hour and a half after they accepted funds, it was all c committed. That's what they said. Yeah. Day one, hour one, minute one, dial yeah. in. And they, they even had hired a different company to make sure that the service wouldn't crash because that happened before when they did the yeah. lease pro grant programs. And then she... And then they said it was going to be gone. Of course, then there's that case, but it doesn't impact Gail. <laughs> yeah. Well, for the first 11 days, it was open only to women-owned and veteran-owned and economically disadvantaged people. Yeah. Well, she's obviously a woman and her husband's a veteran. a veteran. So I think that helped. So in the whole United States, for Watertown to have gotten anything is very pleasing to me, anyway. Uh, number seven, three new businesses have been opened in downtown Oakville. Uh, if you get a chance to review Robbie's pictures that he sent, which I did, uh, those three are in his, in his picture group. Uh, but it, they take up uh, vacated spaces. One is a, uh, a, basically a smoothie shop, healthy smoothies, 
One is a nail salon, and the third one is, uh, I think I've talked about this last time, is cosmetology. They, they put on makeup for people. And I've signed up. They're going to use a trowel on me. They <laughs> uh, <laughs> Number eight there, part of our budget for this year has been devoted to developing a brand for Watertown and to market several properties nationally. Uh, Advanced CT has been awarded that contract at, at your request. I, I signed the contract uh, to work with a, to develop both of those projects. And the uh, the branding piece is synonymous with a, a marketing plan for the whole town. How do we market? It's just not uh, a slogan, but it's a plan to marketing our marketing our town to the state and to the nation. So, and we are moving forward on, on that. We've had a couple of meetings so far. Uh, we're making some progress on the EDC website, not as much as we would like, but uh, I think soon we need to get you guys uh, mm -hmm. together. Joe and I have met once or twice with, right. with Dave Grant. But just so you understand too, that this branding has stole some of the time from the I'm website. Sure. So we've, sure. we've been, we had to do some, some uh, some homework that we had to submit, and uh, we've had a couple of meetings with Mark uh, to talk get this thing going. So that sort of consumed a little bit of the website time. So, but we it's not forgotten. So I'm just slow down the pace a little bit. Is there a subcommittee or anything for the branding, like marketing we're, committee? Well, or? we're funny you're asking that. It's uh, we're going we're trying to pull one together now. We're, we have uh, we have some ideas of how to get some people in. Um, they're not going to be. Um, in one sense, one, I can tell you so we can share a little bit about what would happen today. So we're going to reach out to some of the um, service clubs in town. And we're going to ask the Lions Club, the Rotary, maybe Unico. Um, but we're, not, we're still trying to get exactly who. But we're not going to choose. We're going to let them choose a representative from the group. Um, there will be, um, I forgot who else we're going to. But there's a few. So I think we're going to try to get to about, commerce. about now Chamber of Commerce, another one. So there's going to be about nine or ten people on this this um, focus. It's more of a focus group and to get some ideas about which way we're going to go. So we didn't want to make it a political. We wanted to reach out to the community and get their input. Um, and so it, it'll be, it'll be I, I think it's going to work out better that way. Um, and then no one can say, you know, that we, we chose a certain group of people to do this. Because, like I said, we're, we have no idea who the Lions or Rotary or anybody's going to choose to, to represent them. Um, we, we were trying to figure out a better way of getting a cross section of people, and I thought that was a, that was a good way to do it. But that would be for the branding and the marketing. That's for the branding, thing? yeah. So they wanted more or less. We did this homework assignment. Um, then what they're going to do is they're going to have this focus group just to talk about it and to get some ideas. Then they'll, then they'll formulate a, some ideas for us, and then we could we'll meet as a sort of not, not a, um, probably a, a final or, or preliminary draft and then we'll, we'll move forward with it. So, but we're going to get, um, like I said, we want to get a good cross section of people and not just, uh, not just a bunch of people from the Democrat or Republican town committees to do this. I mean, that's well, I think my, my concern was more getting people who actually understand the whole process of building that marketing plan and branding and all that kind of stuff. We're more gonna, so than so – so you're still getting a, so the same advanced group So Advanced CT yeah. is leading the effort. So okay. they're going to – they're the okay. they're the brains on how to do this. Okay. Cool. And they're going to just look for input. Okay. And they're going to take that input and they're going to build it. So okay. we're not going to – we don't have the expertise to build it. So they're going to – because still, when you're talking, I mean, like we always talk about trying to get young people involved mm -hmm. in anything, whatever, all those service groups, Yeah. Well, hopefully they give a good cross-section of ages and incomes yeah. and all that kind of stuff, but it's they're all very homogenous right now. Right. You know right. what I mean? So it's like... But Joe brought up that point today, too. Yeah, we got to get some, some younger, good people, younger people yeah. out here, too, so we get a cross-section. Maybe no, one group that we could consider... Um, if you hadn't already, would be some of the Boy Scout troops, some of the Girl Scout yeah. troops that do a lot of voluntary work, a lot of work on um, our parks out here and other yeah. groups, you know, their own, mm -hmm. and they're a younger group. Younger parents. Or whatever younger parents, people right. who are kind of up and coming, who are going to be in this town for yep. a number of years growing up, yes. and they may continue through with their ideas. Yep. So we have to be, we have to be um, careful on, you know, we want to keep it to about 10. 
because if we get too many people in there, we're just going to get stuck. So, but that's a good point. We can certainly um, consider somebody from that that section of of, of the, our but town. It's, but it's a great idea because you're getting the community involved. At right. The first yeah. step, and yeah. it's a broad-based community, right. not any kind exactly. of special interest. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Advanced CT has selected a, a, a professional marketing guy who's going to shepherd all of this. So we'll give him. We had some questions. Yeah questionnaires that they asked us about different things about Watertown. I filled one in, Joe filled one in, Mark filled one in, and we're sending them off to them. So then they will come back with ideas to present to the focus group and then to get some feedback from the focus group. And um, my definition of younger people is under 60. <laughs> Any other <time>. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't say that as an ageist when I do say those, but no. I just want no. you to know, just every time yeah. I do say that, I don't say it as an ageist. I just say it as like the people who are going to be the future right. of the town. Right. So I, I want yeah. them to be involved in the decision yep. making. Yep. I don't mean that they have a no, better no, no, opinion no, no, or worse no, no, no. opinion. Oh, we get it. No, we understood. understood. We agree. So. That's good. <laughs> Last item on my report is consistent with our website. The, the new town website is done, uh, and I, I have a, 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 I can't even say preliminary anymore. <laughs> I have an advanced copy of what it's going to look like, uh, and we're fine-tuning. There is a whole committee put together to do this, and we're fine-tuning it now, and it will be, uh, it will probably go live in a couple of weeks. Does so. it knock your socks off? Uh, better than we have. <laughs> <laughs> um, what a good and it's a really great. Uh, <laughs> it's, we'll keep you in suspense. <laughs> great review. <laughs> no, it actually is a lot better, a lot better, consistent with a lot of other towns. So, and we looked at a lot of other towns' websites. So, and that's my report, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Okay, under old and unfinished business, the budget. Um, Anything to add? I mean, we, we know it's been approved. It's been approved, uh, and we're we're good to go. And we're moving forward, so I think we can we can get rid of that in future meetings. The storefront, um, Rob, you want to talk about what you did today? Um, I mean, no, I think I no, I mean no, the you, carpet. no, you don't know you. Yeah, no, I um, I just happened to have time yesterday. Uh, I started a new job, so I okay. I'm now home. Right now, like pretty much all day and stuff, and my days new job and are a little company? slower. New job and new company, or just new job? Different place. Oh, yeah. Um, so I just happened to be able to go around yesterday and uh, take some photos. I should have organized it in a way to bring it up on the screen, but it's in our emails, so yeah. if everybody saw it or didn't see it. Yeah. Uh, but I just basically went around just what we had talked about last time. You know, we live here, so it's just like when you're at your house. And you're like, oh, I got to spackle that thing. I have a crack there I have to fix that light. But that light's out for seven months before you fix it kind of thing because you just see it every day. That's like kind of what happened with our town, I feel like. A lot of times we just forget what it looks like to the mm -hmm. naked eye. And two times now I've been reminded of um, <laughs> what the outside world thinks of Watertown as it drives through. And it wasn't favorable. And... I get it, I 100% get it, especially after I looked at the pictures. You know, I tried not to even be, I literally just did it while I was in my car, and just like drove around quick. I didn't even wanna get like certain, ang obviously I took the ones that, you know, they weren't just renovated last year. Yeah. But um, they're rough. You talk about science. So, Everything science. in general, yeah. like just the condition of the buildings, yeah. the, the signage, all of that kind of stuff. Um, there has to be a happy medium with the signage. I feel like, you know, we, we touched on this last time that it was so restrictive before that it was just so difficult for businesses yeah. to get any kind of signage that would help them. And really at the end of the day, that's what the regulations should be there for is to help them have the best location for their signs, have it be as, you know, legible as possible, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and I just, I think I mentioned it, but even just having your phone number in the sign is a complete waste. It's like a tip that I just want to go and th <laughs> I want to tell everybody downtown that keeps putting it in their sign because it's a complete waste of space in their sign. They could have larger letters for their businesses. No one is writing down those numbers as they're driving down Main Street. 
everyone's going to Google it or, you know what I mean? They're going to find the number somehow else. So it's like little things like that that I feel like we could maybe help those businesses make some better decisions because those numbers take up a big chunk of their sign. So even just something as small as that. And if you go around now and you pay attention to the signs that have, like Anthony's doesn't have their number on their sign. Yeah. Everyone's getting to Anthony's, they're calling Anthony, you know what I mean? Like if people are going to call you, they're not going to say, oh, let me jot that down as I write, drive 55 miles per yeah. hour past this uh, business. So just something as small as that, that I just wanted to highlight. And then just, it's gotten crazy with the signage. I mean, it's like, I even put the one of the, the tanning place that's over by Burger King. It's just like, it's like boom, 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 boom. I mean, it's just, it's insane, the kind of set. And so it's not like, oh, they put a card out front and they have a sign hanging here and there. It's like plastered on their windows. It's just, it's everywhere where it becomes so noisy and crazy looking that there's just got to be like a better way to do it. I don't know how and make it as equitable as possible. Um, like I said, it was too restrictive before. Um, I worked with the Hard Rock Cafe when they first came in and their restrictions were so insane. Their sign was like this big and nobody would have ever seen it. But now Simply Bowls just moved in and they went by the new regs and it's perfect. It looks great. Mm -hmm. They have two signs so you see it from two different directions. Now they have temporary things to announce that they're open and all mm -hmm. this stuff and it's great, you know, but there has to be something. Otherwise it just ends up looking so messy and then just like the cracks and the all the, <laughs> like the weeds and all that stuff, you just start to just not look at it. Right, yeah. So all those great businesses that opened downtown in Oakville, those buildings are so messy and crazy that I still don't even look at them now because it's just like, ah, I can't. It's just too much. It's like, what do you even look at? You know, And that doesn't help them. So I'm trying to come from a standpoint of economic development, helping them succeed as much as possible if this is their new business they might not understand that whole thing they just think like no wherever you can put a sign you should put a sign wherever our name can be you should have it you know do you think some of that is the result of covid and people panicking and nobody was coming in so they wanted to just well i think we had like such crazy restrictions before that when that person left everybody was like cool put signs out and like yeah you know. maybe we can find a nice happy medium though so robbie what about sorry joe just mentioned that i had at a point what about if we send that to p and z not, not to the commission, but, but to Mark. Oh, sorry. And no. so the whole point of that whole thing was then to be able to follow up with them and say, you know, like we did have money in our budget for the study that we did with CERC and all of that kind of stuff. So if they allow us to find those, that money there, we can fix storefronts or help them with their signage or do something working with local businesses, local awning companies, lighting companies, any of that kind of stuff to help them kind of fix their fronts. I just keep getting inspired by that show that we talked about last time too. It's just, it's amazing what these people did to this whole downtown. They did a whole strip. Is anybody else watching it? I did no? watch it. Okay. I did watch it a little yeah, bit. they did yeah. that whole strip and all they did was help paint the buildings, maybe put some new awnings, take down some old awnings, put some new lighting, help with the signage. Not crazy expensive signs, mm -hmm. but just made it a little bit more cohesive, you know? Right. Um, so we can be, as EDC, trying to help those businesses, we can be that. And even if, it, even if you did one storefront a year, and I think they had it so that you had to make a contract for like, they had to be in business already for three years or something. One storefront a year even would make such a huge difference. But if we could do like one in Oakville, one in Watertown a year with that money, it'd be so mm -hmm. nice, you know? Or if you just threw up an awning somewhere or you had just little projects that we could kind of figure it out and work with the owners. We're trying to figure out ways to get around the whole landlord thing. So let's just try and help those small businesses that are struggling, that are trying mm -hmm. to do whatever they can do to open. And they might not have the funds to do a really nice yeah. sign. Yep. So they do that plastic temporary sign because that's all they can afford. Right. Then we can help them. If they survive a couple of years, we like. Well, I think yeah. you're talking, so there's two aspects of what you're talking about. So when I said to, if we could send this to Mark, yeah. we're not talking about the storefronts. We're not yeah. talking. But, you know, with all the crazy signage you're talking about, we do have regulations. But I would hope that, you know, you know now that we're coming out of COVID and, and there's, you know, a lot of things weren't, you know, we, we couldn't put more demands on businesses and, yeah. and you know, only hurt people more. But maybe... We maybe P and Z comes up or Mark comes up with a plan and says, 
hey, you know, send a note out to these businesses, hey, six months from now, yeah. you know, we're going to start enforcing some of these these regulations that we have on the books or a year from you know, pick a time I don't know what the time what's the right time frame yeah. because we can't all of a sudden wave a magic wand and, and penalize these people because they have signs up yeah. and they got to spend more money right. so you have to give them you know some lead time that yeah. they, they can ease into this and it has to be reasonable but it also I think you really have to take into consideration more you know their out of pocket expenses too well know, and so. I would be more sympathetic too like you said if it was the whole COVID thing. There's so many of them. It was pre-COVID. That is yeah. the issue. So it's like, but but now I mean, the that's where is, yeah. But the problem is now we, we're out of we, you know we're coming out of COVID. Yeah. A lot of these businesses, you know, they they suffered during COVID. Right. So I, I guess we can't look backwards and say, okay, well these people did this three years ago. So you got to wipe the slate yeah. clean. You that's say, why okay, I think maybe new regs have to be determined yeah. too, so they're not the restrictive new ones. Regs, you know, new regs, or you know, so may, yeah. maybe it's something that that Mark can look at. Over time, I don't want to. I don't think it's something that goes to the PNZ Commission because it's something Mark would would bring up on his own. But we bring we bring it to his attention and yeah. let him, you know, sort of come up with some ideas of, of how we can make things better. He has a good background. He's he's worked in Southbury. He sort of knows that whole signage thing. Oh, um, Mark Masood. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. I don't know why. Oh no, I, oh, I'm Mark. sorry, not Mark Raymond. No, yeah, Mark Mark okay, yeah, yeah. But let, you know, if we, you know. Oh yeah, no, he totally. Under, I've talked yeah, to him. So, so he understands a lot of yeah. this, and so maybe we just, you know, we just talk to him yeah. a little bit, or just, you know, joke and talk to him, and just mention, you know, is there something we can do down the road, and pick a time, yeah. you know. Well, yeah, he was one of the people I was talking to that we were both yeah. like, it was too crazy before, where it just made it difficult for businesses, yep. and we don't want to make it difficult. Right. But show them the benefits of doing it the right way, kind of thing. You know what I mean? Well, maybe like, what's we the give best him way? time that he can develop a plan and, right. and, and yeah. implement it in something that's reasonable for everybody. Yeah, totally. So, I like that. I would recommend you all look at Robbie's pictures he sent because it is kind of eye opening. We just assume the town is what we think it is. And when we see him in su succession, it, it had an impact on me that it did not have. Totally, yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's, let's let's start with the signage and stuff like that first, and then we can talk about you know we have a the budget's already set, but maybe we talk about something for next budget year. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I mean, obviously not yeah. anything now, but just because we keep saying we have it on the docket, and it's but like, if we don't, but if we don't start talking something. about it now, the right. budget's going to come around, <laughs> right. and then we'll be talking twenty three instead of. But 22. that might be something where it could be a small small budget yep. that makes a huge impact. Still, yep. You know? Okay. Fair enough. This yep. for the next slide. Okay. Yep. Okay, number three, uh, C, item uh, C is Sealy, and I just want to pass these down. Yeah, I, I got the other direction already. Okay. okay. Yeah, is there enough there? Yeah. Oh, you have to pass it. Okay. So, Catherine, have you, Catherine, have you seen the... the yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So this, I guess this was presented um, at, at the last um, PNZ meeting um, of what that Sealy property would look like, and I guess they've designated it as Hillside Park. Um, so, I mean, I, I think aesthetically, um, it certainly hits a lot of points for my aesthetic. I passed this around to my neighbors, and uh, everyone thought it was a was really nice fit for that property. And I guess one thing that I've heard is that there's four buildings, and they're only showing three, and the question comes up about number four, but you know, but we can only deal with what's in front of us here. Um, but I, I think that's pretty aesthetically pleasing. Um, so, is this the height that everyone's been talking about, or is this the lowered height? This is the lowered. This oh, lowered I was gonna say height. this doesn't look no. that tall. No, I, oh, okay. I think they're forty foot, forty foot now. Oh, I was gonna say these look normal. These don't look right. okay. I don't think this is actually definitive either. I think this is yeah. A it's a conceptual. Yeah, it's a conceptual. conceptual. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm not saying this is going to be yeah. exactly, but it's. But hold their feet to the fire. What we've, what we've seen on this commission over the years is that these conceptual things are pretty, pretty close to what happened. It may not be exactly what happens, but um, they tend to be, um, I don't think it's going to be 180 degrees from what we're seeing here. Um, so, uh, so I don't know if anybody has anything to add. I think my only question is, the so the drive-through. So I have to be honest, I yeah. don't really know a ton about the drive-through, uh, perspective drive-through. It looks like it's not on these three buildings, at least, I don't know. Um, 
but I guess this is why I was always so concerned with the regulations that were being changed for other properties in town, mm -hmm. because it was my understanding that this still probably wouldn't be affected because you still have the bank drive through, CVS drive through. The shell. What else is over there? The shell down there. <clears throat> I don't know how the shell down there across the other. Oh side. right. I don't know if that comes into play or not, but. Yeah, so I feel like there should be enough there that would, n like, not allow a drive through <coughs> in this chunk. Again, I'm not an expert on those, but that's why I was so concerned when they were talking about changing the regulations for the drive through because I thought the way it had been worded, it sounded like it would prevent issues like this, basically, where, you know, you would get too much of that traffic mm -hmm. uh, congestion with too many drive throughs and because even with Straits Turnpike, which is you know probably a place that you think of a million drive through being able to be on, that would still even be crazy coming in and out of each one. You know, if right. you think about right. it, all being drive throughs. So yeah, a location like this would definitely be a nightmare. And the the main entrance is going to be what's that side street? Henry, Henry Street. Street. Henry Street. Yeah, I decided on Henry I Street. It's around Henry Street, is, I believe. It's coming off of, I believe it's coming off. The last I knew it was coming off of Riverside. Yeah, Henry Street. Street Henry, Henry Street's right Street. off Henry of Riverside. Street. I took a drive around just to make yeah. sure to understand yeah. what they were so talking about. Yeah, yeah, that's a little. Basically, on that same dark. thing, I noticed the other day on a I get, Saturday or Sunday, I was driving down Main Street, and Taco Bell had actually spilled out on the Main Street and their drive through. Mm -hmm. And the rules are supposed to be. You must be able to queue 12 cars on the property. Well, I mean, they had a lot more than 12 cars. So that's the first time I've seen it in Taco Bell. Maybe it happens all the time, but that's the first time I noticed them queuing. Well, I, think I know are, sometimes it spills onto the road, yeah, but yeah. Uh, I've never seen 12 there. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> on Main Street, then, we have both. Right. Starbucks that spills out under there, and we have Taco Bell. And Starbucks is, definitely. And this is this. And also thing. Dunkin' Donuts. And Dunkin' Dunkin', and Dunkin', Dunkin, Dunkin Donuts. Donuts. So those are yep. three drive-through er, or three drive-through areas. Burger King too. And they're all. Yeah. And then the speeding issue at the other end of the dri of the I main street where yeah. the people got hit and stuff. So it's like. So now we're looking at renditions mm -hmm. of Sealy here with right. a possibly you know I don't know what Building Two looks like here. At smaller streets, talking about drive-throughs, internally or externally, the, the traffic still needs to come in and out of it. Mm -hmm. Regardless of where you put those drive-throughs, they still need to come in and out. The cars still need to move. They'll be even crazier because then they have to go in. And Henry, yeah, and <laughs> Henry Street is not a large street. It's a it's a side street at yeah. you know at best with a lot of residential. Even with you know, and there was talk mm -hmm. last night about increasing setbacks from residential areas, um, keeping screening, but that doesn't, that doesn't address car traffic. Mm -hmm. You could do all the setbacks, but the cars still need to come in and out. So I think that's a pretty, pretty big issue. And I know this isn't set in stone, but I feel like this is a perfect example, right? To keep on file kind of thing of like when people are talking about stuff that this totally fits with everything else that's downtown. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. the, the Violet, I don't remember all the names of those yeah. old buildings, but the Violet, yep. the one that's right before yeah. you go onto the highway, basically, yep. right across from the church and everything. It well, kind of has that vibe, you know? It's like an updated version of that vibe. This, this fits with the plan of conservation and development, which said in Oakville, it would be the... Uh, industrial. Uh, yeah, co compatible with industrial. Right. And the Oakville Road. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like it looks like those buildings and the factories and the yeah. post office and all those buildings out yeah. there. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, we don't. I don't know where we go from here. Or if how do we progress on this now at this point? I'm not sure. Um, one thing. One thing I'd like to address, though. I mean, this me, Joe. There's no one in this commission knows anything about a Wendy's. Uh, there was a Wendy's com conversation about two years ago where a gentleman called and asked a question on Main Street about Wendy's. But not, nobody that I know has any, we, we haven't been contacted by any fast food people, period. 
forget about Wendy's, huh? you can go across the whole gamut of every single fast food company. And no one has ever been, a, has called economic development or anyone else I know. So that I'm speaking on, on a personal basis. Um, so, so why the drive-in is being asked for, I have no idea, but, but again, right now, I don't know of anything, so. I know one of the concerns was financial institution. The bank needs the drive through for the ATM okay. machines. Well, yeah, yeah, so could be that too. was one. Yeah. That's the mm -hmm. only one I know. As I know, John Lombard did mention, so did mention a, uh, a bank. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know he did mention a bank at one time right. uh, early on when we met with him uh, some time ago. I think that was the, where the rules changed, right? I feel like it was al the allow it was allowing the banks that was to the have one the on Straits Turnpike. Okay. That was the banks and pharmacies and yeah. that sort of thing. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. But I know he brought up he did bring up uh, at that meeting the possibility of a bank. So, but I, that's the only time I've ever heard uh, of a drive-through mm -hmm. on that property. But you know, I don't know everything. But I can only say what I I can tell you what I know and what I don't know. So, but that's. I was very pleased that I think this re rendering is consistent with the advanced CT report that yes. said village, colonial, small shops. So, right. And I think the other point I'd just like to, to make is that, you know, the advanced CT was a was a, a model. It, it was something that we asked for. They gave us their thoughts. I don't. I personally never thought it was the the document of documents that it was going to be followed 100%. You know, I mean, it gave us a good good way to, to uh, look at this, this property, the possibilities on the property. It wasn't somebody from economic development or planning and zoning or the, the town manager's office or anyone. It was an independent look on what they thought was good for that property. Um, so, but again, I'm sure like every other plan, there's some tweaking that goes on um, and so, uh, but again, I never thought it was the perfect uh, blueprint for what that Sealy property was going to be. So, um, so does anybody else have anything else to add? If what they do is anywhere close to what these these drawings are, I'm all for it because, and you know, I'm trying to visualize in my mind what they're going to put there and talk. And then when I see this, I said, this is just what I'd like to see there. I mean, yeah. I mean, and you know it's not going to be exact, but if it's anywhere close to this, yeah. well, you know, that's what I would love to see there. Now, what stores are there? <clears throat> Who knows? Yeah. But I think it, it does remind me there's a, I, I, Boston Post Road is such a long road, I can't remember, but somewhere in Milford, I think it's where Whole Foods is in Milford, and that plaza, yeah. there's Joseph, there we used to, well, Joseph A. Banks yeah. is going out, but there was Joseph A. Banks, there was Whole Foods, and, there was a, and this top building sort of reminds me of what is down on, on, on Route 1, uh, the Boston Post Road. I don't want to pick at old scabs, but <laughs> this looks like a commercial version of South School. Oh, <laughs> well, that's what it's supposed to be. <laughs> that's the plan of conservation. That is what the CBS should be like. <laughs> but yeah. So, uh, but, uh, uh, oh. <laughs> But I, you know, not to bring it, not to bring it back to that. Yeah. But I, you know, I do agree with Teddy. I, you know, my wife, I show this to my wife, shows it to some of my neighbors, and they, they thought, you know, if, if something like this could possibly go there, they would be, you know, they'd be very happy to see that there. And maybe motivate the other buildings downtown, right, to kind and, of and judge themselves up. And I'm a neighbor, too. I, I only live, you know, I live a couple of stone throws from where Catherine lives, so... I have to live with the consequences of this also. Um, so I, I, I think if something like this happens and it's, you know, and I know it's just a rendering uh, and I know things can change, but, uh, but I also wish that this was, this was done early in the process. So people, I asked, we've talked about this early on that it would be nice to have a, a visual that people could look at and have a better understanding because, you know, until this, this rendering came out, I still had a million questions about, every time I drove by the property, I'd look at it and say, well, you know, what could be, you know, how could we, they fix this property? And now this sort of makes sense, and, and so, um, but anyhow, that's my two cents. Anybody else? Jack? Steve? I'm fine. I, I, uh, seeing you ask the question, uh, <clears throat> this 
property, uh, the Sealy property, uh, before that the Winchester property, and before that the Autowire property. All of them I'm very familiar with because I walk by it every day walking to South School, <laughs> my alma mater there. And uh, so thinking about <clears throat> and, and being very familiar with what went on uh, on that property when it was Autowire, uh, which was making metal parts and very large plating department and then uh, Winchester moved in there. One of the reasons was they did a lot of plating and, and uh, there existed a plating department which was beneficial and then what went on there totally changed when it became a mattress factory. But thinking back what an advancement on Oakville to have this instead of the factories with their plating departments mm -hmm. and all the chemicals uh, in the plating process and they had to dump their tank somewhere and in the old days you, you dumped it in the most available brook. Yeah. Uh, so I think this tremendous foot forward to have this as an example, and it's just an example, but to think that that, that property could end up like this, I think it's, it's wonderful. Yeah. And there is that large portion of it that nobody will ever build anything on, mm -hmm. and yeah. that's what you yeah. actually see from the street. That remains polluted forever. They could right. not clean yeah. that up. So. Yeah. Okay, anything else on this subject? talked about the website already and we'll be getting back to you shortly on that um, okay so we're back to new business item number 8a um, so talk about the town hall sale so um, so after after our previous discussions I can envision a, a, a note uh, to the town council uh, that would you know say that you know we are in favor of the of of this pub style or you know it, i'm not sure how we word it yet exactly but something to the effect that you know we we much prefer that property become a destination and and, and a point of, of pride for the town and you know more or less not just give it to someone that's going to put a couple of offices there i mean we could rebuild this and bring it back to its day of glory um, so but it's okay with if somebody like to make motion we'll draft a letter to the town council you know along those lines I think if you do it from like a oh, sorry good no good I mean I like the idea of the pub and everything what his plans are but we have do we have any idea what the other bidders are going to do with it if For, we're if we're at least give them an opportunity to present what they would envision if they want to I but I think I think what the one that we know of, Teddy, I think they just wanted to use that first floor for office space right. and not renovate the upstairs or downstairs or right. the basement. So if we haven't at least what I'm saying is we should give them the opportunity to present some kind of idea of what they plan to do with it. So that when we look at say say there's three bidders mm -hmm. and uh, they're within twenty five thousand dollars of the sale price. I think then our recommendation would be well, we've heard what people want to do with it. So for the $25,000, I'd rather go with the with the pub one. <clears throat> so at least you can give the other people a chance to present it and say, well, why do we lose it? Because we prefer to have this in town instead of that. Right. So they can't come back and say, you know, oh, you gave it to the, we bid higher. So normally, I, I, well, I agree with you, but I think, um, where we stand right now, by the time we meet again, this will be a done deal, one way or another. I don't know if there's enough time uh, to have other people. Then come I'd, in word, and, I'd word, it, word the, the recommendation based on what information has been mm -hmm. given to us that we would love to have this pub style. So that way, we didn't preclude that mm -hmm. left anybody out. Okay. But nobody's yeah, we can us, we can word it so nobody's you know, giving us any idea what you're doing. Yeah. With it, okay. This gentleman is a definite. Uh, plan of what he wants and we love that idea. Right. 
Yeah, and the only reason I got involved with him was he asked me to. And if, if the other bidder had come to me, I would have worked with him as well. Yeah. Uh, but I did not seek him out, and I did not seek them out, because technically, I don't have any say in what the town council does with the town buildings. Right. I mean, so I don't, I don't want to tell the guy how to spend his money, mm -hmm. but if they're within ten, I mean, twenty or twenty-five thousand dollars. When you're talking about a couple of million dollars in renovation, we're talking nothing. Mm -hmm. So why not just meet the 125 or whatever yeah. sale price is and forget being the low bidder? Mm -hmm. Just make just for accuracy, the number he's kicking around is 1.3 million. Yeah, well, even if it's 1.3 yeah. million, whatever you know, whatever he's talking about, you know, compared to another twenty thousand dollars, what are we talking about? Nothing. <laughs> well, you know, I think one thing we can do is is go back to the old terminology that fits a lot of things and that is you know we recommend that that the building be sold to the, someone that's going to have the highest and best use of the property right uh, that's what it was. And, I, and I think that that you know so let the town council determine on their own what the highest and best use is and maybe put in there you know putting money aside yeah. you know let, let's go for the highest and best use I was trying to think of the term I'm not but but I think that's what we if we go something along those lines and we could also put in there teddy that you know based on the information that's that we know of right now or that's been made public you know um that's why we're, we're taking this action but this is not to say that other people can't come forward with a similar plan right and so well, we're coming from an economic development standpoint yeah. so we could just say whichever one is going to be the most economical right you know benefit to the town Sorry? I'll make a motion that we authorize Joe Seacrest and Joe McGrail to draft a letter incorporating that idea and incorporating Teddy's okay. and just bounce it off us in an email. Sure. Okay. Second. 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 Okay. Second. Second. Okay. And then if there's a conversation about... Motion's made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? No. Okay. Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. All right. Thank you. Um... So Joe, uh, an item B under new business, Joe mentioned that he had met with uh, the CEO of Connecticut Main Street, Pat Patrick McMahon. Um, and so I was thinking, because we're part of Connecticut Main Street, and I know Patrick's busy, but I think I'd like to have Patrick come and visit us and, and talk to us about you know, what his job is and how, how Connecticut Main Street fits into the state and, and their success stories and how they've taken towns like similar to Watertown and maybe and and made you know strides and maybe we talk maybe that's where those conversations go, Robbie, with the, the storefronts and different mm -hmm. things because that's what they're all about. Right. They're trying to spruce up the main street in town. So, if it's okay with you, I'll I'll try to we'll try to get Patrick here probably in the fall, <coughs> September, October. I'm going to guess time frame, and uh, then we can just have him give us a presentation and uh, maybe I'll help us give I'll, us some guidance. If I can plant a seed with you folks. Every year, Connecticut Main Street gives awards for outstanding work. Well, this building, <coughs> he was impressed with this building as he was with what we want to do with the town hall. He says, I don't, I don't know very many small towns that have spent this kind of money taking an old school and turning it into a town hall. So at some point, when they announce uh, nominations for awards, I'll talk with you folks first, but we might want to put in this mm -hmm. building yes. as an example of restoring a downtown. I mean, it is downtown. It's on the main drag. And we spent $15 million or more renovating it to the way it is, which is one hell of a story of what small towns can do. And then the old town hall will be another one from that. But they, they make these awards and they wait for nominations from their members. And I think we could be as competitive as anybody in nominating ourselves for this award. I would say you don't need our, our permission. Oh. I think that's something that you do as economic development coordinator. Okay. You just go right ahead and do it. And, okay. You know, I don't see any purpose of us. So. As Patrick helps make the decision, and he was yep. here and yep. took the pictures and toured the town. So. Yep. Well, the, reason, the main reason I'm saying that is because you may find out that the nominations are due by a certain date, and it's in between meetings. And then, yeah. you know, we run oh. the risk of not of not being able to meet those deadlines. 
Um, so yes, I think you just, as I economic would, development coordinator, you just, just go ahead and do it. Okay. Yeah. I think he would like to come to these meetings. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll get, we'll try to get him here in the fall and uh, I think it's good. I think we'll, we'll certainly learn a lot from him. And I think we already talked about the marketing plan and, uh, but we'll, we'll, fee we'll give you more information uh, at the next meeting of how that's going to go. I know um, we've already submitted uh, our homework, if you wish, and uh, that's, that's going to be reviewed by Advanced CT. Mark is going to be out for a couple of weeks with uh, shoulder surgery, um, so we probably won't get back with him until maybe towards the middle of July or thereabouts. Uh, Once we get this information. And then, then we'll start that, and then we'll start this, this focus group, and then we'll be able to give you more information on it. So. Okay. Um, okay, number nine, uh, public participation, second. Oh, I'll shut mine off. Yep, that worked. Well, sorry, I'll try to go fast because as it turns out, there's a lot of things to comment on. Um, Catherine Camera, 31 Cottage Place. You know, the first um, item... Can you take your mask off? Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. No, no. It's easier I'm really good. <laughs> I do it really good. Um, so it was interesting because when you started talking about um, someone being interested in the, the history, did anyone else get this email last Saturday that was... Um, Quite historical like, society. Yeah, uh, yeah, the historical society, because you know we're talking about somebody who really thinks things are great, and I got I, I, I was waiting at the um, whatever. I was doing something where I had a little bit of time, and I saw this email come through, and I started reading it, and I was I was stunned. Um, so I, I I I don't have time between worrying about the Sealy property to to delve into this. Um, I, I really don't know what's going on. I mean, it sounds like this whole major upheaval doesn't doesn't look good for us. It sounds like. I mean, they they're talking about the attorney general being involved. Um, so, I, I haven't been reading the paper much. I don't know if anything's been in there, but you know, it just sort of you've got somebody who's saying, "Oh, this is a great historical town," and then I'm reading our, our records are being dumped, and it's kind of a little um, concerning. So uh, that I was just looking at my email. Um, I've not seen the email. I could forward it to you. And I actually would like you to forward me the pictures that, that Robbie has, so I'll do a little swap with you. Um, <laughs> Catherine, do you know whether there were any signatures involved in that? Because the one no. that I saw, they said there were two, no. so there were no, no signatures that, of who It was just said, the like, friends. But it was yeah, I don't know. I don't know who it really actually came from. I'm assuming I got it because I make donations, and I'm you know like a member, so I guess that's why I got it. Um, Is that the so historic commission or a historic society? Historic, historic society. museum. The museum. The museum. I, I heard that there was an issue. I, I didn't read the article, so okay. but I knew there was. A I'll forward it to both of you. Um, I think it's called the Historic Society Museum now, right? right. Or large yeah. historic museum. It's not a grammatically great title, no. whatever it is. It <clears throat> doesn't flow well. But um, anyway, I just thought it would be important maybe to, I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you. I think you'd find it interesting. Um, and, and real quickly, um, I was reminded when you were talking about a, a centerpiece in town that just today uh, on West Hartford, one of my coworkers said, oh, I'm going to Watertown tomorrow. I was like, really? For what? She's going to the winery. So oh. mm -hmm. I said, oh, yeah, that's there. Never been there before. But, you know, that's somebody, Crystal, I don't know where she lives exactly, but she doesn't live around here. Because she was asking me how long it would take her to get there from West Hartford. So um, that was interesting. Um, on those businesses in Oakville, I wanted to comment. I'm actually glad it was on here. There's a tree right in front of that, the, the new businesses, and it's got a branch that goes right in front of their signs. I don't know if the town owns that tree and would cut that branch. If it cut that one branch off, you're going to see their, um, you know, the sign that's at the very top of their, their building. I, I believe it would be the town that owns it because I don't think they could yeah. do it themselves. Joe can, Joe can hand that. Yeah. yeah. Can talk to the um, because I actually was thinking I was going to go into the business. Well, I, I did go in, but they were really busy, and, and I couldn't wait. Um, and I was going to mention to them about that. And then I, it dawned on me, I think it's a town tree anyway. 
<clears throat> so that would probably help them. Um, and then I just wanted to make a few more comments about this, the ceiling and what, what I heard some of you say. Um, as far as a factory, um, you know, that, that can't happen there now anyway because the zone was changed. So that, that would never be there, which is great. Um, I didn't hear last night, and maybe I'm wrong, I heard the developer say that the, that, that, that the entrance is going to be going straight, straight from Davis Street straight in. I didn't hear him say it was coming off of Henry Street. Um, but it, there's just a lot, it's, it, you know, people really aren't clear on what's going on there. Um, I do want to point out something, though, that, that, that again, though, what you're looking at is a concept. Mm -hmm. So we don't know for sure. That's not a site plan. That's not anything. It is missing a building. It shows nothing about what a drive through would look like. But what I really, and I brought it up at the meeting twice, that nobody seems to be recognizing, and this is because I've had an attorney go through it. There is vague language in that that would allow for other things that we'd have no idea that are discretionary. And it's very, very concerning to me. And I am looking into, um, there is case law on having something that vague. And I am looking into it because, you know, as nice as that looks, and we all think it looks great, there is language in there. Remember, this isn't a town, this isn't the town's, um, regulation. This is an applicant coming in and saying, I would like to create this zone and this is what I, you know, you got to really watch what it says. And there's a line in there that's very, very concerning to me. So, you know, that, that went, rendering is great. That looks nice. It's a concept. But when you have vague language like that, um, things can be interpreted by different people, including the commissioners. And it's very, it, it's, it's very, um, it doesn't keep the public apprised of what could happen there. And it's very concerning to the, to the people. So I just wanted to, to point that out because I agree. I have no problem with what, what, what we're looking at. But there is language that, mean, that, that, that isn't 100 percent. It doesn't show the drive through. And there's, there's language that could allow for things that we're not seeing there. So um, you know, if somebody said to me, this is it, and that, that, this is what it's going to be, I'd, I'd walk away. I'd be happy to. I'm losing sleep over this. Um, but there are issues in that proposal that if it's allowed, that, that, that could be problematic. So anyway, I appreciate that you um, are, are thinking about that uh, property. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, based on them leaving off building number two, you can readily assume that's where the drive through building is going to be. And whether it's a bank, a restaurant, or whatever, you know, you got to keep that in the back of your mind. That's why I didn't put two on there. I think you also have to remember that this is a zone change and it's not the actual proposal, so you have to really, there are two different issues there. They have not, this is, they have not presented their proposal. Right. This is strictly a concept for the zone yeah. change. But it's just coincidental that he didn't put building two on there. Yeah, and, and part of the zoning, uh, the, the request for zoning says, Every single building will have to come individually before planning and zoning to be approved. So it's not like a blanket. You can put in any you want, and we don't have any say anymore. Mm -hmm. So there, there will be a, a check and balance. Now, they'll have to be governed by the general zone, which they'll argue, well, generally, it's OK, so you can't question what I'm going to bring in. So. And, I, and I, you know, just one last thing on this. I, you know, I know this is a rendering, um, but I, I have to believe that that this has to be close to reality. You know, it may not be 100 percent, but uh, I can't believe that a developer would ask for his own change, show this piece of paper, and then come out and do a 180 and do something totally different. So, you know, I, you know. Am I, do I think that the final draft or the final product will look exactly like this? No, but um, I'm betting a lot that it's going to look pretty damn close to that. Um, and, and, and when, and it was, it, when it was presented to PNZ, it's part of the official record. Okay. Right? Yeah. So. And you know, and, and I'll go back to uh, we're Uncommon Grill with Dr. McHugh and Vinny when they came to us and gave us a, a rendering of that building. That's exactly the building that they built. Yeah. And I was so happy because in, 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 uh, Vinny came and he said, this is what I'm building. You know, and again, I think, I think if I go back and, and, and try to remember exactly what was said, but he said, you know, maybe a little bit different, but this is, and, and, and if it's different, I don't know where it's different. 
I mean, I think it's he did a damn good job. You know, he presenting. had the drawings in there some place too. Yeah, I wanted to dig them up. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually just the materials that they end up changing because yeah. that's where they're saving money mm -hmm. at the right. end or whatever. Right. It's not going right. to be. <clears throat> Real wood slabs. The aesthetics are still the same. Right. The right. Structure. The other building yeah. was going to be the bigger one. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the one that got sort of pushed right. back. Yeah. Yep. I want those earthlines. Okay. Does anybody have anything else? I want to take. Second. Okay. Motion is made and seconded that we're going to adjourn. Okay. And we're adjourned, and it is All right. eight fifty six. Fifty six. Right. I'm trying you. to um, kind of figure out my bearings right now. Is, am I like on the stage? Yeah. You're in the gym. Yep. Yeah. No, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, you mean what, <coughs> what it used Behind to be? those doors, right up the stairs. Like this was the, the stage, stage right here, right? And then this was the back of it. It was like the behind the stage, there was the windows. Windows. Yeah. Yeah. I spent four long here, right? years in this building. <laughs> in the same four? grade. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went elsewhere to get the other two years I <laughs> I thought you were spending most I only had one really I tough year. Yeah. One year I was here for sixth grade. One yeah. really tough year. Uh, I yes. hated it so much. That's not where the uh, board of it? Oh. Oh. No. no. I went from beautiful Pope right. School. It was just built, the new, new book school. It was just built in kindergarten year, so all five years, six years, beautiful. And then I came to this thing, right? And my art class had, like, a water pipe running through the middle. And I'm like, where am I? I came from the C 